Uh, and in the meantime, I was pastoring a church in Nairobi. I and my family, by that time we had four children. And as a family, we were all involved in that uh, developing a, 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 a fellowship of believers um, there in, in the city of Nairobi. So those were very, very good years. So then the time came when we knew we should go back to America. It was very difficult. But uh, sometimes when one is involved in life's journey, it comes clear that the time has come to change. And so, um, so we moved to the USA. So that's another step in my journey, you know. First of all, growing up with Bumangi and where the white ants are, and the ancestors are called upon to decide whether the gospel is good or bad for the Zanaki people. That's my roots where I grew up. <laughs> and then the whole experience in the States with this very conservative sort of community that I was part of. My parents were part of that community and what that meant as a young person living within that society. Very interesting, very amazing. And then the experience in Somalia and then Nairobi and writing that book with Katarega, a dialogue between a Muslim and a Christian. It's unusual because it's very rare that a Muslim and a Christian has that kind of a relationship where they can talk that freely with one another about faith, both points of agreement and points of disagreement. But it was a wonderful time. And now the USA, back to the USA with our four children. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I was invited into a very interesting job there in the United States, and that was to relate to the communities that were immigrating to the USA. The United States is a very interesting country for many reasons, but particularly from my perspective. It is a very interesting country because the peoples in the US come from all over the world. Well, witness the man who is the president of the US right now, Barack Obama. His father comes from Kenya. I know his home village, where he comes from, you know. Uh, and his, uh, he, where his father, his roots, you know, there in East Africa. And then during his childhood, he was, in, he was in Indonesia playing soccer with the boys and girls in the fields of uh, Jakarta, you know. Grew up there within, within uh, Jakarta. So he represents in his personhood, the diversity that is the USA. Uh, in our high schools across the country now, the majority of the students are not Caucasians. They are uh, from Haiti and Indonesia and China and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and Russia and so forth and so forth. You know, just the whole world is represented in the USA. You go to New York City, and just stand on any street in New York City and you just see a parade of the nations going by. Well, so these immigrants are coming to the US by the hundreds of thousands, a couple million every year. And uh, they are Buddhists and they are Hindus and they are Muslims and they are Sikhs and they are Christians and they are atheists. There they're coming, you know, by the, by the hundreds of thousands every year, these immigrants coming. And so our church was involved in many ways in attempting to relate to these newly arriving immigrants, help them find jobs, help them find a place in our society, help them get enrolled in school, helping to introduce them to the English language if they didn't know English. Many of them were refugees, had fled their home countries like Vietnam and so forth, uh, helping with trauma counseling, all sorts of ministries for them. And of course, as Christians, sharing with them the story of Jesus. And, uh, and many of them, many of them, as they moved to the US, decided to follow Christ. And many of them decided to remain Buddhist or to remain Confucian, you know, but who looked to the church community to help them find the way in the very chaotic experience of finding a home and a place uh, in the USA. And so uh, I was appointed to direct the program within our expression of the church to relate to these immigrants. And we worked in a couple dozen languages. It was an extremely exciting and interesting time um, relating to these people from so many religions and cultures and backgrounds and helping them find the way in pluralistic America. 
So that's another chapter in my life, which also has to do with the reality of world religions. It was interesting that many of these newly arriving people did not want to lose their culture. They wanted to maintain their culture, but also felt a need for a new faith that would help them uh, become oriented to this tremendous transition, change that they were experiencing. And so for, for very many, they found the answer to that question within the Christian gospel. Because within the Christian gospel, they could continue within their languages and cultural practices and so forth. But they're also part of now a worldwide community of faith in which Jesus was the center. And many of them found Jesus becoming the center of their lives was very helpful as they sought to find their way. My congregation that I come from in the United States, just recently, there was about 50 people from Bhutan um, came to our community, moved into our community. Uh, several hundred moved into our community. And about 50 of them began attending our church because we were helping them find jobs and so forth. And they wanted to find out what this Christian faith is that, that uh, encourages this kind of compassion and concern. And so they started to attend our church, 50 of them. And so we had translation systems and so forth for them so they could hear the sermons and then started a special Sunday school class for them beginning with Genesis 1-1, and just going through the Bible, exposing them to the biblical story. And most of them decided to become Christians, and so they formed the church in our community, a Bhutanese church, you know, and elected one of them from among them to become a pastor. That's the kind of thing I was involved in, which was very, very exciting, and I enjoyed it simply immensely. So that's another chapter of my life. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. And let me just go to the last one I want to talk about, and that is Lithuania. The time came when I knew, and my wife knew, it had come time for us to leave the U.S. and return to the international community. And so what we did was to go to Lithuania which was the first uh, region of the Soviet Union to leave the Soviet Union. Lithuania was the very first. And uh, as Lithuania was beginning to take the steps to leave the Soviet Union, the leaders of the independence movement got in touch with churches. And they said, we need a Christian university in Lithuania because we need the values that the Christian faith brings to a society, which are necessary for a healthy, democratic, civil society to prosper. So we asked them, uh, the, the, the Christian leaders who were involved in these conversations asked, well, what are these values that you believe are so important uh, to develop a healthy, civil democratic society. And they said, three values. First, what do you think they are? <laughs> what do you think they are? I'll tell you what they are. The first one was integrity, truthfulness. Integrity, truthfulness. You can't have a healthy civil society when there is deception, when deception is accepted, when falsehood is accepted. So first of all is integrity. That's a fruit of the Christian faith. And secondly, they said, is respect for the other person. You might disagree with him, but you don't hit him over the head when you disagree with him. You have civil conversation. You talk with one another. That's the second basic principle. And the third, they said, is personal responsibility that you don't look to the government to determine what you should do, that you take responsibility for your life, that you decide to develop businesses and so forth, you know, and not look to government and so forth to provide everything that you want or need. Take responsibility. Those three principles, personal responsibility, integrity, respect for the person, and they said, those three values are necessary for a healthy civil society to happen. 
and as Lithuania, <laughs> where the church has been smothered for 70 years, those values have escaped us. We need to recultivate those kinds of values, and we have done our investigation, and we now know that those values come from the Christian faith and the church. And we want a Christian university to be developed in Lithuania where the graduates would be uh, influenced by those basic values. Well, I was in the United States at that time very involved in what I described to you relating to the international world that was upon us and with us. But when I heard of this invitation in Lithuania, I told my wife, I hope we can go there and help that to happen. And that's what happened. We got an invitation to come. So we left our job in America and we moved to Lithuania within the former Soviet Union and had four wonderful years there helping to establish and uh, further develop this Christian university, which is referred to as LCC International University, a Western liberal arts college in which the Christian faith is taught, but not forced on anybody. And most of my students in that university were actually atheists and agnostics uh, who came because they wanted a first-rate Western education. But as they studied at LCC, we prayed and hoped that the values of the Christian faith would touch them and that they would indeed become people in the businesses and uh, politics and uh, professions uh, of Lithuania and the regions beyond, that they would become people of integrity and who respected other people and who took personal responsibility. Those were the organizing themes that we worked with in that university. And it was an amazing time. And in my course on theology, I'll talk more about this later in this class, in my course on theology, uh, which all students had to take, even if they were Christians, <laughs> even if they were not Christians, they had to take this class. And so I hugely enjoyed teaching this class on theology to students, most of whom were agnostics and atheists, were not believers. And uh, in that class, the biggest theological issue that we worked with in every class was not, is there a God? <laughs> they didn't believe in God. But that wasn't the big issue they debated. The big issue was, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And a number of you, when you talked about religions today, you mentioned the question of who am I is, is a question that the religions seek to answer. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> and they said in our high schools, we learned the answer to that question. And the answer to the question was, I am just an intelligent monkey. I have only an intelligent monkey. And they said how they would go to their mirror in their bedroom after biology class when they got home from school and they would look in the mirror and they would say, you are just a monkey. That's what the teacher taught us today. That's what science teaches. We're just monkeys. And I would say, oh my, oh my, I hope that's a lie. And in this theology class, I have learned that God says, I am not just a monkey. I am created in his image, and God loves me. I hope that's true. But oh, I'm a scientist. I'm a scientist. And scientists don't believe in revelation. They only believe in what they can study objectively. So I can't say that I am created in God's image. All I can say is I'm a monkey. But I hope, I hope that someday I can say I do believe that I am more than a monkey and created in God's image. That was the debate we had in those theology classes and they would write their journals and then occasionally a student would write in their journal, last night I made the U-turn. <laughs> I am now a believer who knows that I am created in God's image and I'm so happy about that. Or others would write in their journals, I'm almost ready to believe, but not yet. I still believe I'm only a monkey, but I hope the day will come when I can say 
I am created in God's image. That would be just simply wonderful. So that's the context in which I taught uh, there in Lithuania. So those are my journeys. And uh, it continues. I, right now I'm giving myself full time to the challenging involvement in Christian Muslim relations, trying to build relations between Muslims and Christians in many parts of the world, giving myself full time to that. Again, a commitment very much related to faith and our understanding of God and who we are. I'm right in the middle of all of that in what I'm doing right now. So that's my journey. And I just share that with you because each of these dimensions of my journey relate very specifically to what we're talking about in this class. My experience at Bumangi, my experience in the USA in a very conservative Christian community, my experience in Islamic Somalia, uh, and then in Nairobi, Kenya with the Sufis, and writing that, that, that uh, dialogue with Badu Katarega, and then my very exciting journey in the USA, working with these many different cultures and religions coming to our shores and finding the way in that society, and then uh, that amazing time in Lithuania teaching theology in a world which was very influenced by atheism and agnosticism and secularism. And in the middle of all of that, as a Christian seeking to communicate the theology of the gospel, the theology of the Bible, and now my worldwide involvement working with Muslim and Christian communities, trying to build bridges of understanding. That's been my journey. And I will be referring to that journey from time to time in this class as we go along, bringing illustrations and examples uh, to, 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 to the table.